This is Doug Payne, and I'm happy to have you on board for a chance to ride around the 2019 Land Rover Kentucky three-day event cross-country course. We have the incredible opportunity here with Van Diver, or Quinn as he's known in the barn, probably one of the best cross-country horses in the world. So as we set out on course here, we're looking to establish a good rhythm in the first handful of fences. Well, they're not small at the same time. He's very comfortable at the level and we're looking just to get really an efficient track going and good rhythm so that the first key combinations that are coming up here soon should come up with ease and he's in a rideable, pliable state. So with that in mind, our first key combination is coming up here and there were two basically maximum size open oxers and quite small timbers so it looks near enough as if a, just a solid show jumping type jump that is as wide as you can possibly legally have it. We've got two and it's they're on a um, probably a seven or it could be also an eight stride line and you're looking just to make sure that you get a good distance so we can have again a very confident feel to heading into this course because there's a whole lot more coming up. And luckily there, had a great shot in. Quinn is quite careful and does hold himself off the fence. And that is a huge advantage. Bidding wise, he's in a rubber snaffle, has a tiny bit of leverage to it, but you really seldom oh, have to oh, oh. honestly touch the reins. First key combination here, our water jump. And he had a pretty good size drop in, and I actually think we caught a shoe that from the A to the B was quite long and ended up having to push to get there. And I know from photos that we've seen afterwards that we were already missing our left front at this period in time. Luckily for us, the conditions couldn't have been better and he's got good feet. So by the end of it, he actually still was quite clean. Foot hadn't broken up at all and we were in great shape for the next day's show jumping. Galloping along between the fences, we're looking for the most efficient straight line between two places. <coughs> And so oftentimes you'll see I'll be up against the ropes, one side or the other. And we've got a triple bar, again, a same sort of feel, kind of narrow timber, a small timber that's coming up. I'm just going to hug the ropes here and end up just clipping the right side of it, always thinking if I can be able to touch on the inside track, it's just going to save a few extra meters of space and allow us to be up on the clock even that much easier. And so coming up here, we've got a turning combination, quite a large table, and then a drop landing. And knowing Quinn, he tends to cut down a bit early, and that first stride away is quite small. So from A to B, I wasn't really strictly looking for any particular stride. From the B to C, it did work out in a five stride, which was our intent coming in. And I would tend to think with cross country, the striding, I'll walk it, certainly have a pretty good idea of what your plan A would be. I would be very quick though to be able to adapt and not get stuck and fixated on it. That said, if I had walked it in five and I was getting six or seven on every combination, it's a very easy indicator to know that you might be getting a little bit too backwards. So frankly, the opposite is true. As you're leaving strides out all over the place, potentially you're gonna get caught out by an accuracy question later on. This is the first really one that I was, I was concerned about. <coughs> It was a going three strides, hanging log with a bit of a ditch to a corner that's quite narrow. I really wanted to get a nice flowing distance coming in, and in and, and all honesty, I got a bit of a waiting one. So knowing that, land and pushed him up, but he's super genuine, and he's willing to please. Again, if you get him in the rough proximity, he's going to lock onto it and he'll be in good shape. Next fence coming up is probably one of the biggest rider phobia is the last thing you want to do is have a big old miss to it because it's got a maximum size ditch and wall and the photos they get from the base of it are pretty epic but ended up coming down here and from here we got a good distance and that's always a huge relief jumps over that Quinn's not bothered by ditches at all it really could care less wrapping around to the second water jump and we've got a angled sort of triple brush to a log to a triple brush. I tend to teach them at home to jump these at an angle, so this presentation, or the, the way the galloping lane came in, really suited us well. So I just sliced across the A, nice bending line, and then you're straight from B to C. So there, even if he had some sort of bobble at the B, we are directly lined up to the C element already. And then again, as soon as we hit the ground on the backside, right away trying to gallop away from the fence and not lose any time. At this point, I think we're roughly 10 seconds up on the clock and I was pretty happy because we are 
about what, six minutes, five minutes into the course here, and to be up on the clock there is good, but there are a number of big combinations that are time consuming still ahead, so it wasn't one of those things that we could just sit back and enjoy it at that point. <clears throat> up here in the hollow, there was two options. One was a right turn, the direct route, and that was a house down the hill, up the hill to a corner, with a very tight right turn on an off-cambered uh, terrain. And the option, which I chose to do on the left, is just a bit of a flowing, easier uh, mental exercise for them. The nice part about it, it was not much longer at all, although by distance it seemed as if it should be. We went up there in the first couple of horses and I knew I'd, uh, Buck Davidson was going, I knew he was going long, so we went up, timed him, and we timed uh, some of the others that went straight, and from my best estimation it probably cost us two seconds worth, but the key factor with Quinn is that he has a history of sliding out behind on tight turns, and there were already a couple of horses that did one trial, and we had a couple others that did slide out behind before I went out on course. So at that point, it made the decision easy. It wasn't worth the risk to go the direct just for two seconds worth of time. And as you can see again, hugging the fence here, my goal is nearly to be clean the left stirrup on the posts. And we've got a, a nice good gallop here, and it's a chance for him to recover. A bit of a downslope, a bit hard to see in that regard. Turning here, we've got two stumps that are on a longer three-stride line. And again, he's very good with accuracy questions, so I took a bit of a sweeping turn into it and then got him lined up. And just a touch long in the three, but again, he's a very good jumper, so not something to be too bothered by. We're heading down toward the head of the lake. We've got one big open oxer and then right into it. With greener horses, this starts to become a challenge not only in the course or the jumps that are being presented, but also the crowds and the excitement that are in the area. Luckily, Quinn has been to a number of venues and here as well with crowds, and it doesn't really seem to bother him much at all. At the head of the lake, we've got a maximum drop straight across to a duck and a roll back to a brush fence, and then probably six or seven strides to a bank up to a bounce out. And so as we get a bit closer, my line, my goal here was to jump the drop in direct to the duck and then an inside turn to the right handed uh -huh. side of the brush. So I jumped in there, saw a bell boot go flying off and now look as soon as we can, get your eye on the next fence and then move up, great distance in. I was aiming for the tree directly straight ahead to put a nice bend in the line and allowed the bounce out to happen easy enough. I think if you're any bit further left that last element of the bounce is hard for them to see and there were some problems throughout the day at that particular combination. Again, nice galloping section here and we've got a trochaner that's coming up and then one of the other key combinations that had a big influence on the day. There was a direct route straight ahead that was a bank up down to a corner and then there was also a longer route to the right. I ended up choosing the longer route to the right, but I did do a bit of a shortcut. In walking it, there was a flower bed and a statue, and I actually walked it from the edge of the flower bed. It was a perfect two strides to the triple brush, and as we said at home, I tend to jump them on an angle, so it was a very familiar, easy thing for him to process, understand. And there were a couple falls at the direct route here, so again, I think it probably is about a second difference in time in the manner that I did this. So again, we jumped up, had a great distance to the corner, which allowed a nice turn on the backside, and the, actually that little wooden statue man actually can help the on the right side. Quickly in and out, and uh, made really, honestly, easy work of it. Cruising here, just a another house sort of filler fence we stuck to the left side it appeared to me a bit smaller um, just got a good, good boy. distance to it down the hill we're starting to get towards the end of the floor so fatigue becomes a factor for sure i wanted to get actually uh, underneath this next fence to get him to back off and just get in a bit rounder shape got a good distance in and this is the one place that he did have a little bit of a bobble Decent shot in, and all of a sudden he went to put down early behind, which kind of left us dead in the water and had to kick up towards the out. Maybe we could have been there one less stride had he not hung up on it, but again, he's no worse for the wear, as you can see, took off on the backside, and we were back in business. Again, another 
big table. And one of those you just hope you see a good distance and we've got it and hopefully you don't have to waste much time setting them up. So as we're going across here, we're heading now towards the end of the course and although we've been here a number of times in the past, this was a section in the course historically that Quinn would actually start to get quite tired. <coughs> And we did tweak the fitness work this year, did some more speed work early on a great hill, and it seemed really to pay off in the end because he was still completely full of running at this point. Again, picking whatever side of the fence is going to lead think? to the shortest distance between the two points, or in that case, on the right side. I chose here. We had two options, left and right. I went right to right and walked in a totally normal four, and frankly, I almost could have gotten there in three. Oh, boy. Quite tight. But... That is something that does happen obviously later in the course, the stride length does open up. Again, we had two options here, second to last, last combination. You could have gone the right box or the left one, and then same thing right or left on the far side. I chose to do the left one at a bit of an angle. Just gave a stride or two more to line up to the B element. And again, assuming that they are Come on. a bit tired, they're going to be slower to react, and I thought it was just a, a kinder, easier way for the horses to accomplish the same thing. And, Really, I don't know that there was any time difference between the two. Best fence of the whole course is, of course, the last, and cruising across the line. I was guessing I was either right on or ended up one second over the time allowed here. And so, again, we finished uh, the next day. He jumped a double clear show jumping to finish in fifth place and national Ooh. reserve champion. So before we depart, I want to thank, of course, Jess there, my wife. Uh, mom pops up here, and then Courtney Carson. Um, who looks after Quinn on a daily basis. And you see Lila in the background there. Also want to thank Debbie and Kevin Crowley. And so they bred him and it was a great thing. They were able to come see him go and um, still are a part of our day to day. So it's certainly rewarding to have great people with you and great support. And the horses certainly benefit as a result.